Hi everyone, my name is Joe Berman. I am a senior lecturer at Canterbury Christchurch University uh, in the Life Sciences section and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing at home to, um, to deal with coronavirus and keep my mind busy during these difficult times. Um, as well as being a lecturer, I'm, I also run a commercial mushroom growing business and I wanted to show you guys today a little bit about how mushrooms can be grown from the very starting point to the point where you get them to the shops. Um, so it's a very applied set of science that hopefully you'll realise needs a lot of scientific skills and I want to talk to you about those scientific skills today. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, learn how to produce mushroom spawn from and mushroom cultures. Now it's quite difficult to produce microbiological cultures at home and it's not something that should be done without good training and ideally it should be done in a very clean lab. But one of the things that I'm trying to show you today is there are home ways in which you can produce mushroom cultures um, given the right training. And that's why you come to university is to do a little bit of training in, in these kinds of practical skills. But this is a very basic version of what we would do in a lab that I can show you whilst I'm at home. So um, this is a pressure cooker. You may not have seen a pressure cooker before, but essentially it's a pan which you can heat up on a hob, which has pressure release valves because this um, this once it's sealed completely, the pressure builds up very, very uh, to a very high level inside this canister. And what that will do is it will heat and pressurize whatever's inside here and completely sterilize it. So what we can do is we can produce a nutrient um, medium, which we mix up in jars or in bottles, and we place inside uh, this, this container and pressurize for several hours in order for it to become completely sterile. Then we can simply add them to some new, clean, sterile Petri dishes let them set and then add our new mushroom culture and that way we end up producing something that looks a little bit like this so here we have a button mushroom okay this is the, the standard kind of mushroom that you would find inside a uh, in a supermarket and what you can see is uh, all mushrooms have these little gill like structures that you can find here so this is a uh, a gill this whole structure is called a basidiocarp and this part here where the gills are is where they produce their reproductive spores. So these undergo meiosis and they reproduce um, sexually in order to produce new variants. Now we're not interested in those at the moment. We want to clone this mushroom. So how do we clone it? Well, we can take this tissue here. This soft tissue inside contains the, the clonal cells which are, um, are um, being produced by mitosis. So producing identical clonal cells of one another. Now if I take a small amount of that and place it onto some nice clean sterilized agar, then I get something that grows a little bit like this. Now I just wanted to show you one of the other things that we can use in a, uh, in a clean lab in order to make this happen uh, effectively. This is what we call a laminar flow hood. It's a very simplified version of it or a filter hood. And what you can see here is there is a thin uh, filtered uh, mesh very very fine just a couple of micron particles can get through this which has around the back of it hopefully you can see a fan and what this essentially does is it pushes air through this mesh so that it comes out very clean and ultra filtered uh, and and that means that when you're working with cultures they can stay very clean and you don't get any bacteria or unwanted fungi growing on the surface of what you're trying to produce so this is one of my tools that I can use for a home grow type setup. So, once we've got our fungal medium, now what we need to do is produce a large amount of mycelium somehow. And we're gonna do that by using these buckets in order to produce some, what we call grain spawn, which I'll show you what it fully looks like later. But essentially what I've got here is two buckets, one with drainage holes in them, and another one which I'm gonna fill with water. And to start with, what I'm gonna do is add grain. made a bigger hole here but add some grain to this bucket I'm going to fill it about halfway up like so because this will absorb water and once I take this grain essentially what's going to happen is it's going to be soaked for about eight hours inside this bucket I will then drain it off allow the water to escape and then the wet material, the wet seeds, and the wet grain will go into one of these porous bags, which can be sterilized. And we can sterilize it by, again, pressure cooking it. 
and then if I introduce a small amount of my mushroom mycelium from my agar plates into this and seal it up, the mushrooms will grow all over the surface of the grain. And then we've got what's called mushroom spawn. So snap to that, I'll show you what that looks like later. Okay, so what you can see here is some fully grown mushroom spawn. Notice it's very white, well colonised with the mycelium. We'll come back to that later. Um, and here's me in the farm. So I'll, I'll talk over a little bit about what I'm doing. Some of this stuff is sped up or time-lapsed, so you'll be able to see uh, generally what's going on. So we're adding to bags these hardwood pellets. This will be our final substrate. That provides cellulose, that provides the carbohydrate source for the mushrooms. We then add some lime, that will pasteurise and kill any bacteria or fungi that we don't want inside the substrate. And then we add some bran, so this final stage here is adding bran, which provides the nitrogen source. All mushrooms need nitrogen to build proteins. And then we dry mix those bags up, so we'll mix um, hundreds of kilos of these every week, and then we'll take it to the next stage. So inside the farm here, you can see that I'm wet bagging. This is, this is a process whereby we add water to hydrate those dry hardwood fuel pellets and the dry bran. Uh, and it will uh, we'll add about a litre of water to each of these bags that you can see um, soaking up that water. So the dry material soaks up all of that water very, very effectively. And this is a little time lapse just to show that. So it's expanding as, as all the water soaks into those pellets. We then take that spawn, we break up all the spawn that was in that bag into sm much smaller chunks. So you can see these tiny little uh, chunks of grain which are covered with mycelium from the mushroom that's grown inside that bag that we showed you earlier on. And the more we break that up the better it is for inoculating. The more inoculation points there are the better. So we add all of those little tiny grains to our substrate that we've just wet bagged. Stick it, stick it in there, a couple of hundred grams per couple of kilo bag. And then we seal that all up. So here, again, here's a sort of time lapse of me producing one of these bags. Uh, we heat seal the plastic, make sure of course that that is uh, nice, nicely tight and air sealed. And then we need to mix as best as possible the substrate and the fungal spawn that we've produced, the, the mushroom spawn, so that it's evenly distributed throughout the bags. We want to make sure that the, the growth is as even as possible. We then pack the bags down, label them with a date and the strain type, so PO stands for pink oyster, and then make small holes for aeration. Some people will use filter patches in their bags for this, but we make small holes. So here's a bunch of them that I was making up, again, in time lapse, so that you can enjoy all my hard labour. Um, and you can see that they're quite easy to produce. We can probably produce um, about 100 of these bags in about two or three hours. So here's a bunch of these bags ready to go. These were yellow oysters, which are inoculating. We take them then into a nice warm room. So this is our incubation room, kept at about 26 degrees Celsius. There is a temperature logger in there. There is also um, a heater in there to keep it warm, and it's fully insulated uh, uh, all around with all the walls. Those bags stay there for a couple of weeks and they move into the fruiting room where we produce the mushrooms. So this is a high humidity room and here are, here's an example of some of the mushrooms that are growing in there under nice cool humid conditions. So th these mushrooms are ready to harvest, they're just starting to turn over at the edges which means that they're definitely fresh and ready to go. And here are some of our pink oyster varieties, so fantastic stuff. Okay folks, I hope you found that video interesting and helpful. Um, it's just one of the examples of how uh, science can be applied in the, a real world setting to do real world things. So I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, get in contact with us. Uh, and most of all, stay safe uh, and big up to all the key workers out there um, doing a great job protecting us against coronavirus. So thanks everyone. Take care.